Grace, it's wonderful to finally meet you. I'm sorry I couldn't be at Chris's funeral. I was called to London. He was a special person. Thanks. The flowers you sent were beautiful. Can I offer you anything? Before the celebratory champagne, that is. I'm fine, thanks. Well, should we start signing? I have one question. My brother mentioned that even though your group is buying the paper, day-to-day -day control of the Guardian would stay in my family. I didn't see that in the contracts. Well, it's true that we had an understanding that Chris would remain in the editorial chair, but of course that's not possible now. Such a loss. Thanks, but I'm going to need that provision put back in. I've decided to stay on as editor. Where's this coming from, Grace? These past few days, I realized something. To the city, the Guardian is a newspaper. To you, it's an investment. But to me, it's family. And yet you've never run a paper before. I'm a Van Helsing. I was born in one. And there's no one who can run the Guardian better than I can. With all due respect, my investors might disagree. I'd love a chance to persuade them. Or should I say, him. You seem to have a theory, Grace. Let's hear it. Somehow, Chris found out who you really work for. Why else would he have gone to Dorian Gray, frantic to find a new investor? Why else would his last words have been, she lied? I don't need to dignify that with a response. And I don't need to sell you my newspaper. No, you don't. You could go bankrupt. The first thing you should understand is that neither I nor Mr. Drax had anything to do with Chris's death. You're not denying my theory. Mr. Drax owning the Guardian is not only in the best interests of the paper, it's in the best interests of the city. Your boss stands for everything my family ever fought against. I'll see the Guardian burn before I sell it to Clayton Drax. That is another option.